Hey, welcome to Population Ecology, Comparing Limiting Factors and Changes in Carrying Capacity. This is Eco 1.1 Level 2. After this video, you should be able to distinguish between density dependent and density independent limiting factors. You should be able to predict at what points in the growth of a population density dependent factors will limit their growth. And you should be able to connect changes in an ecosystem to the resulting changes in carrying capacity. This all assumes that you know what carrying capacity and limiting factors are, and you know how birth and death rates create the growth rate. And yeah, it's me, Moser, but you already knew that. This should look familiar by now. We've got a population starting out from zero and growing exponentially for a while before something limits their growth. Well, limiting factors limit growth. Duh. What you should know is that there are two broad categories of limiting factors. Density dependent limiting factors and density independent factors. So, density dependent limiting factors have a larger limiting effect on populations that are higher density. In other words, the first population here will see more limiting from a density dependent factor than the population on the other side, which will have, uh, which will see less limiting effects from the same kind of density dependent factor. So what about density independent factors? Well, density independent factors have the same amount of limiting effect on populations, no matter how densely populated they are. In other words, both of these populations are going to experience the same amount of limiting effect from a density independent factor. So what kind of things make for density dependent limiting factors? Well, a lot of density dependent limiting factors are actually related to resource shortages, such as a lack of food, a lack of water, or a lack of nesting sites. These might be factors that limit a population seasonally, such as herbivores having a hard time to getting, getting to vegetation in the winter, or lack of water may be a seasonal issue in places that have a dry season. Lack of nesting sites, of course, is only an issue during the nesting season. But even though these factors may only affect a species or a population for part of the year, they still limit the carrying capacity year-round for that population. Okay, so what kind of things make a density independent limiting factor? Well, the big ones that are usually cited are things like natural disasters and disease. Notice the asterisk there. When a forest fire burns through a woodland, it's going to limit the population of any species that gets in its way. When a mudslide wipes out a number of individuals, that's likewise going to limit the population no matter how densely populated they are. Disease also, once it spreads, can kill members of a population no matter how dense or sparse their population is. Now, can density independent factors be related to density dependent factors? Sure. If a natural disaster destroys a lot of food sources, we're gonna see a food shortage. And some diseases may spread more rapidly when individuals in a population are more able to contact one another. But in general, natural disasters and diseases are considered density independent factors. So here's that very familiar by this time graph showing a population that has started in a new place from a zero population size and grows exponentially for a while and then starts to slow down. Well, where does that change in growth rate occur? The slowing growth is as the population approaches that carrying capacity. When we see a population's growth limited near carrying capacity, we know that that limiting is caused by a density dependent factor. They've hit carrying capacity and now birth rates will tend to decrease, death rates will tend to e increase, so overall, the growth rate slows. This one looks a little bit different. Again, we have a population that starts from a zero size, so in a new place, and they're growing exponentially for a little while, 
but then we see a big drop off and the carrying capacity line is clearly marked this die off this re reduction in the size of the population happens long before carrying capacity is reached when we have slowing or negative growth in a population that is not at or near their carrying capacity, we know that that is probably caused by a density-independent factor. This could be a virus. It could be a natural disaster. We don't know. But this obviously isn't related to resource shortages because they're still well below carrying capacity. So is carrying capacity some unwritten rule of the universe, some unchangeable law of nature? Heck no. Carrying capacities can change, and they frequently do. Changes in carrying capacity can be caused by a lot of things, such as the introduction or removal of a species from an ecosystem. If we introduce a species that competes with our first species, that can lower the carrying capacity of the ecosystem for that first species. Because now, there's somebody else taking those resources. So yes, introduction of a new species, that means increased competition, could decrease carrying capacity. If a new species is introduced that provides a new food source for our original species, we might see an increase in carrying capacity. So yes, the introduction of a new species if it's a new food source, could again increase carrying capacity. If we remove one species from an ecosystem that was previously competing with our species of interest, now we could actually see an increase in carrying capacity because they're no longer competing for scarce resources. So yes, sometimes the extinction of a competitor can actually increase your carrying capacity for a given species. A change in land area or territory for a species can significantly change their carrying capacity. In a species that loses territory, again, this could be from natural disaster, it could be from development, um, you could see a reduction in carrying capacity. In a species that somehow gains land or territory, you very often will see an increase in the carrying capacity for that species. So, yep, changes in land area area or territory that are available to a species can change their carrying capacity, can change, I'm sorry, the carrying capacity of the ecosystem for that species. You got questions? Does this all seem pretty easy? Excellent. Keep moving and let me know.